everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's Thursday, February the 4th, and welcome to G for Geography. Here we That's are. Right. I'm in-house. Jose is in-house. Right. I'm in, I'm in Encino. Susie's yeah. at the- uh, I'm in La Casana. Yeah. And Amanda's here. Say hello, Amanda. Hello, everyone. So happy to be here today on this wonderful Thursday. <laughs> Right, it's we have Thursday. wonderful weather today, too. Yeah, we're we are. Welcome. We're going to have a great weekend here, too. All right, everybody. It's welcome Thursday. Everybody. We're going to visit a very cool place, sometimes a rather cold place, uh, that has sea, land, and rail tours. Today, we're going to focus on Destination Alaska. Take it away, Miss Susie. Can I see the... Oh, wait. We have an Archie Travel tip of the day. Can, can we take that full, Amanda? I... Uh, it is full. Remember, you just have to okay, there you go. Go. Just pin okay, it. Okay, there it is. All right, listen, you guys. We talked about this yesterday. During these uncertain times, Agents must do the following, check and follow up, all reservation bookings 24 hours before departure, the air a must, the weather, the resort, is it open? Is the country state open? Paperwork, passports, COVID test, et cetera. What I'm saying here, and, and, and Susie will vouch for me on this because she had people going, you know what happened on Tuesday, I'm gonna mention about this in the Archer Travel Report this afternoon about the French Polynesia being on lockdown totally with no sign of it ever coming back uh, in the immediate future which means Bora Bora and Tahiti are no longer bookable. You can't send people there. So we're going to have, right, Susie? Well, which they have, they've been lucky in the past. It's one of the few destinations that has been open mm -hmm. for tourists. And I think what happened during the lockdown of a lot of other destinations, they were still taking people. And I think they're taking a precaution now because they're seeing an influx of people now feeling more comfortable about leaving. This is a big hit for, this is a big hit for that country because yep. they depend on their tourism almost 99%. So we, yeah. we will oh, monitor yeah. that for you guys on everything, but it's up to you if you've got people going out of the country to go back and you know check everything. We reviewed this yesterday uh, when we talked about how to book correctly, all right? Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, here we go, Destination Alaska. This is a really cool place, you guys. It, it has a lot of things to offer, and what we're gonna concentrate on this is we're going to show you three ways to actually go and, and and you know explore Alaska. You can do sea tours. You can do a cruise up there. You can also do land and sea. And we're also going to talk a little about land tours. Take it away, Miss uh, Susie. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> okay. As usual, we always go to the map of the world because we want you to know where in the world we're going. So Alaska is in a light up above the United States, as you all well know. So we go to the next slide. We have North America, good. And then here we are, Alaska and Canada. Um, I just, we're gonna, like Jose said, we're gonna cover a couple different ways for you to visit this vast, this vast country, um, or this state. Um, just a little bit of history. On January the 3rd, 1959, Alaska became a state. It is part of the United States, in case some of you don't know, you don't need a, va a visa, you don't really need I think you should take your passport, though, just in case. I think you should take your passport all the time when you leave the continental U.S. Anyways, on January 3rd, 1959, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a proclamation and made Alaska to the Union as the 49th state. So, Jose, what was the 50th state? Hawaii. Yay, you win the prize. Next all right. Slide. Let's, okay. let's, go to, let's go to the next mm -hmm. slide. Uh, some of the most beautiful... Um, it's some of the most beautiful places with unforgettable scenery, magnificent wildlife, and some flat out really wonderful people live in the state of Alaska. So when you take a tour here, most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, you're being taken with a shore excursion by um, a resident of Alaska. So they're very knowledgeable about where they live and about this, about this state. Um, there's some really, um, Glorious mountains here, rivers and glaciers to learn about Alaska's cultures and history or to experience the wonderful, people forget the northern lights are there. Su Susie, I, yes. I just want to stop you for a minute. Can we go back a slide, uh, Amanda? Because I want Susie to talk a little bit about the cities that are here. Right. So you can, you know. So if you cruise, you can either leave from Vancouver. The most popular is going to be Juneau, Skagway, Kachikan. Um, and Sitka. Sitka is not always on the itinerary. It depends which um, inside passage. I think it's called Voyage of the Glaciers, if this was is. And again, it's Juno, Skagway, Ketchikan, and Sitka. That's the most popular. Jose, um, the ports that we're just going to cover really quick are on the 
pretty much the standard of the cruise lines, either from Seattle or from Vancouver. So it is a round trip seven days. Um, All right, let's, go let's go to the next slide. Now, on this slide, you guys, here, ways to do this. Now, understand that this is, you can only do this in one season. It's summer. That's it. That's when all this is stuff is open. These are ways to tour Alaska. You can do it by sea. You can also do sea and land. You can do land tours, and you can also do rail tours. So there's a lot to do here. And it's up to you to qualify your client to find out all the things. Maybe they don't want to do a cruise, but they want to do the rail or the land tour. All right. But that's these are the ways to that you can tour Alaska. Let's go this to is, the next slide. Yeah. This destination is really good for families. I think if you have children that are at least over maybe the age of eight because of the scenery and the history here. And it's it's one of the last frontiers that the United States has. This is really open country and a lot of this. You can you, know, you get a chance to see bear, moose. It's, no, no, uh, no not, Susie, it's, not a chance. You will see that. Yeah, and some of them actually guarantee you when you take some of the short excursions that you would, they will guarantee you to see a moose or, or a bear. Also, if you're a fisherman, this is probably some of the best fishing places. There's some great fishing lodges here if you go into like Juneau. Um, I just want to say Juneau is the capital of Alaska. It can only be reached by airplane or boat which is really interesting, but there's some beautiful lodges up here if you have people that are, that are fishermen. Um, it's one of the more um, popular stop places for cruise ships, fishing boats and float planes um, in the city when you get off. Uh, you can walk with, um, right from the cruise terminal into the city. So it's a really great way to see the city. Now, another, th yeah. another thing to keep in mind of, if you're gonna be doing land, inventory is very, they don't have a lot of inventory here because it's only seasonal. So sometimes, you know, the, the bigger popular places like that have the fishing and all that, they sell out the, the, the hotels because there's only so much hotel inventory. So you really want to book this as soon as possible. Now, we're going to show you some carnival. Can we go back a slide, Amanda, please? And what we're going to do show you now is the cruise itineraries and how they do this. Now, the first one here is carnival and what carnival does to get up to Alaska. Go ahead, Susie. So, yeah, so the, the, they start in Seattle in the first port of call. I had not seen the, this so well, but they usually go um, further north and then work their way back down. This is a seven-day cruise. Um, like Jose said, Alaska is a very short season. It starts about the end to the middle of May, and it ends in about the second or third week of September. Again, these this is limited, so if you have people interested, they usually book it. If you're going to rebook it, you ought to be thinking about doing this and presenting it to your customer now and give them the options of the different types of cruises or cruise tours they can do. Um, once you get into the interior, especially we're going to be talking about the rail into Denali, there are only so many seats on the train yeah. that, that are available when you buy a cruise tour. And this is the one that sells out the very most because of the limited space on this train. Okay. I Let's go to the, this this next one now. This is RCI. Let's, this is RCI to Alaska. So as you can see, the different cruise lines have different ports of call that they go to, and they and they do different things. And they pretty much stop almost all day in these. So you usually get to them. You can see they're fairly close in proximity. So when you dock here, it's usually pretty early in the morning. Uh, do a short excursion, and the way they dock, you can walk into the city. So I would suggest you do. A really cool short excursion. Then short excursions on Alaska are fairly expensive, just so you know. This is not an inexpensive place to take short excursions. Again, book them ahead of time. If you're talking to your customer, whatever cruise line you sell, take a look at the short excursions and book them in advance because a lot of them are extremely limited. For example, they actually have helicopter rides at some of these ports where you can get on and they'll take you out to see other glaciers and other parts of the terrain of that port. Let's go to the next one, please. The next slide. Okay, this is Princess to Alaska. Now, this one, you, we're gonna talk about this one because Princess does something a little bit different than the other two. You wanna talk about that a little bit, Susie? Well, they also have um, the Princess one is the one that you can do a northbound or a southbound. This is in conjunction with a cruise tour. So. Most people do a southbound, which means you would fly to Anchorage 
uh, generally you spend the night in Anchorage and then the next day you would board the train over to Denali. These um, tours, the minimum you can do on a land tour from Fairbanks, I'm sorry, from Anchorage to Denali, that's about a three day. And then you would come back to Seward, or Seward, that's where the Port Whittier is. The bus would take you to the port and you would cruise southbound back to either Vancouver or Seattle. If you do it the other way, it would be a northbound, you do know Skagway, Ketchikan, you would get off um, in, in what's Whittier, Seward, they pick you up, take you to Anchorage, spend the night in Anchorage, and then the next day, of course, you would do the Denali National Park. Also, beside Anchorage, you could do, there's one out of Fairbanks, but that's a little bit longer. But the important part of this is the land tour is probably going to be the highlight. And the reason people do this is it's a long, little longer. You're going to have to do a minimum of 10 days. So it's seven days on the ship and three days on the land. But uh, we're going to be looking at a video shortly showing the beautiful lodges that are owned by Princess. Also, yeah. another thing, Princess and I think it's Holland America, they're one of the oldest cruise lines that have been able to go into some of these areas like Glacier Bay. Their grandfather did. If you get right, to so go into Glacier Bay, yeah, if you get to go in. Not everybody gets to do that. They are the grandfathers of this of, of this destination. Okay, we're going to show you now what the Princess does with the land tour. Let's go to the next slide. Now, here's something again, if we can, Amanda. There we go. So yeah, this is what you see here, what, what they do here. Now, look, you guys, again, listen to what Susie says. You can either start from the north and travel south, where you end up in uh, Seattle, um, or you can fly. You can start in Seattle and work your way north. So there's two ways to do this. So keep this in mind when you're talking to your clients. Here's the rundown of how Princess does it uh, with their land tours. And it's really, really nice. If we go through this now, I know this is kind of complicated, but we're just going to show you a little bit. It's They have a northbound cruise tour and they have a southbound cruise tour. All right. And this is what I think this is a 10 day, isn't it, Susie? Yeah, it's 10 days. So it's still going to be the seven day cruise with the three days of land. And yeah. that's the minimum you can do. Um, not everybody has this kind of time, but I would say most people, when they go to Alaska, it's a destination they probably won't return to. Just for the fact that if you do the land and the cruise, the only reason people generally go back would just be to do the seven day cruise. But I think the interior is the most important part of Alaska because what you get to see there is what the true Alaska is. It's still pretty rugged. It's got still a lot of wildlife. I, I think it's beautiful, but just be sure to qualify your client before you sell them this. Now, now you remember Susie just said that, you know, Princess and Royal Caribbean have been one of the oldest cruise lines that, that have been working this area. They actually have a princess cabins that they name after the cruise lines. They do, they have their own lodging, yep. Yeah, the Princess Lodges. So you're gonna be seeing that in the video. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, now this is Royal Caribbean, also does sea and land. And this is another opportunity that you can show your clients, you know, if you wanted them to do that. And it's, I know this slide's kind of, you know, um, out of focus, but it's the only way I could show you how they do it and, and what the ports of call are. Again, like Jose said, this is, you know, this is a limited, this is limited space, especially on the train. Also the train has a dome. So depending what train you're on, it has a glass dome. So as you're traveling from Anchorage to Denali, you go through a couple, you go through Tafnika and then you go to Denali. One of them actually goes, the lodge is in Mount McKinley. So the dome train is a really wonderful way to see this, this yeah, beautiful, it's, vast, it's vast country. It's, it's just beautiful. And, and we're going to show you some of that here in a minute. Let's go to the next slide. There we go. Okay, there Alaska we, Land Tours. Right, yeah. Um, at the end of this presentation, as we usually do, I'll show you where to book, how to book some of this stuff. Um, so you pretty much know with the cruise lines. But again, you know, this stuff sells out really fast. And you got to be either like a year out if you want to do like a, a lodge or something at Denali because the, the, it just sells out now. You know, right now we heard something today, right, Susie, about Canada. So it looks like the, uh, Vancouver will be closed to North uh, U.S. citizens. So it might be Seattle. But 
hopefully by June or July, we'll have a better understanding of what's happening with the cruise lines and this being able to go to Alaska. But we wanted to present Alaska to you because it's such an important cruise component in wave season and people are really want to go to it. So I want you guys to be familiarized with it. But also there's land tours and there's all kinds of land tours. You can have fishing trips. You can there's just all kinds of things you can do here. And we'll show you that at the end of the presentation when we do the. Uh, hot oh, yeah. So if you have somebody that's not really interested in the cruise port or maybe they've done the cruise in the past, suggest for them to do a land only fly them into Anchorage. There's, we'll show you the tour companies at the end. You can just do the interior part. You can do Nome, Kotzebue, um, you can do Denali. This is a huge, big, big state. And there's a lot more to this than just doing the cruise part. The cruise kind of is like, gives you um, a taste of the cake. Yeah. But then there's a big frosting on top, which is the rest of this of the rest of the state is all I can say. And okay. you have to be a little bit adventurous to do this. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, we have Alaska Rail Tours. You can also do this. Now, Canada and Alaska, we're also working, we're merging with the Canadian railroads to do more rail up there. Um, but I'm just showing you this basic one where you can go from Anchorage to Denali and just have a rail tour. And it's really, really nice, um, but you can also do that. And um, if you're interested, we've got that information also at the end of the presentation, like Rail Bookers does a lot of Alaska, Amtrak uh, Vacations does too. So you guys can book that and it's really an outstanding visuals. I mean, in the summertime, it's absolutely beautiful up there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the next slide. This is what you see. That's Denali this, National this is Park. Denali right? National Park. And that's Mount McKinley there. Yep. Um, and then also, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is Glacier Bay National Park, and this you will pass on the cruise, right? Yeah, but just remember, when you look at a, at a cruise, make sure they do different glaciers. This one is called Glacier Bay. There's also um, two other, I can't, it's Tracy Arm, and I'm trying to think of the other one. They'll show you in the, in the, in the video, but... This is the one that they take you in, and this is where you could hear this. This I've done this, and I want to tell you when one of these pieces of ice, I think it's called caveat, when it falls, it makes a sound like you can't believe. But as you're inside Glacier Bay, they pretty much turn off. The, you almost glide through Glacier Bay. The wildlife in there, you'll see sea otters, seals, you name it. It's it's breathtaking, but please remember, it's cold. I'm not kidding. It's cold out there. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. It's cold it's in cold. June and July. It's, it it's cold. And and also something that you're also going to notice when you're there is that you, you're going to be like, it's 9 o'clock p.m. Why is the sun still out? That's right. Midnight sun. So it's, it's like it's the land of the midnight sun. Midnight in the summertime, you'll have tremendous hours of daylight. All right, we got this great video that we want to share with you. I know it's kind of luxury, but it really explains everything about what a sea and land tour is. Can you roll the video, please, Amanda? Hi, I'm Kendra, and I'm Princess Cruises Alaska expert. And today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite topic, Alaska cruise tours. What's a cruise tour? A cruise tour is a seven day Voyage of the Glaciers cruise combined with rail travel, combined with multiple overnight stays at wilderness lodges in Alaska. And why would you take a cruise tour? You would take a cruise tour to experience Alaska's top two attractions, Glacier Bay National Park and Denali National Park. These are the top two attractions that you cannot miss when you visit Alaska. So a Voyage of the Glaciers cruise is a seven day, one way cruise between Whittier and Vancouver, BC. And you can choose to do this cruise northbound or southbound. So it goes both directions. On this cruise, you'll go to Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, and you'll get two glacier experiences. Every cruise gets Glacier Bay National Park and either College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier. And I want to stop here to talk about why Glacier Bay National Park is so important and special. So Glacier Bay is a protected national park that is highly regulated and not every cruise line gets to go into Glacier Bay. And Princess is lucky enough to be able to enter Glacier Bay and it's a very spectacular day and very special. So 
Glacier Bay has many glaciers in it, but you enter the bay and park rangers board the ship and they get on board and they give presentations and they really teach you about the wildlife and the, and the area and all the glaciers that you'll be seeing for that day. And we even have a junior rangers program where kids can take the oath to become a park ranger, which is super cute. And the pinnacle, the highlight of the day, is when the ship pulls up to Marjorie Glacier and each side of the ship gets to see it because the ship does a little turn, 360 turn. And hopefully, if you're lucky, the glacier will calve and you will hear the magical sound of white thunder. So we love Glacier Bay at Princess and we think it's a major highlight. And we know it's a highlight because it's one of the top attractions for Alaska. Okay, so another part of the cruise tour experience is the train experience. And Princess has an exclusive direct to the wilderness rail service that takes you between the ship and one of our Denali area lodges. And this experience is in domed rail cars. It's a great way to experience the great land because there's scenery everywhere. It's comfortable. You can order a beverage up top or a meal downstairs. You can listen to the commentary of a tour guide that shows you all of the sites in the area. It's one of our most popular experiences and it really helps to bring Alaska to life. So rounding out this cruise tour experience is Princess's Wilderness Lodges and these are exclusive to Princess. They're only operational in the summer to serve our cruise tour guests and we have five Wilderness Lodges. The biggest one is the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge and this is located about a mile outside of the park entrance and it's a hubbub of activities. It's very special there. We have a lot of great restaurants and land excursions that you can book. It sits right on the river. We have our new Fanny Q Saloon there, which is really fun. This is a great base camp for your Denali experience, the Denali Princess. On the other side of the National Park sits the Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. And this actually sits within Denali State Park. It's a very special place and it was built with the sole purpose of having a great view of Mount Denali. And it does. Also at this location, we have our Animal Planet Treehouse that was featured on the hit show Treehouse Masters. Um, so we have a lot of things going on there. We have mountain climber talks every day, twice a day, where you can hear the tale of a mountain climber who's climbed Mount McKinley, now called Denali, and hear their experiences and they'll, they let you play with their gear and show you their pictures from their climb. Um, a lot going on at that location. We have another lodge, the Kenai Princess Wilderness Lodge, and this is located on the Kenai River. And this is a very popular lodge. It's only 86 rooms. Each room has its own wood-burning fireplace, lots of recreational fishing there and rafting on the river. It's really a very special place. Our fourth lodge is the Copper River Princess Wilderness Lodge, and it's located on the boundary of Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which is the largest national park in North America. And the Copper River Princess is, again, a smaller lodge. It's about 86 rooms, and it offers a lot of really great excursions, like fishing. You've heard of the famous Copper River salmon. There's a lot of fishing in that area. ATVs, you can go into the national park. It's a really special place. Our last lodge is the Fairbanks Princess Riverside Lodge, and this sits right on the Chena River and offers a great spot to start or end your Alaska cruise tour. So I mentioned that Denali National Park is one of the main reasons why people go to Alaska, and it is for good reason. Denali National Park is six million acres of spectacular wilderness. People go to Denali National Park to see the mountain called Denali, or the Great One. People from all over the world travel to Alaska to try to summit Mount Denali. Another reason why everyone is so interested in Denali National Park is for wildlife. There is an abundance of wildlife in Denali National Park and everyone's trying to hit the big five, which are bear, moose, caribou, wolves, and doll sheep. So if you're lucky, you'll hit all five. Princess offers many cruise tour options. So I'm gonna to try to give you a couple tips to help narrow those down. So the first thing to think about is, do you wanna cruise first and do your land after, or do you wanna do the land portion first and cruise later? People tend to want to do the land first and cruise later, which is the southbound version. If you do the opposite direction, the northbound, cruising first, doing the land later, there are good deals to be had on those cruise tours. So if you're looking for a bargain, that might be a good place to start. The cruise tours range from 10 nights to 17 nights. So there's a lot of variation there. So think about how much time you wanted to devote to that. If you're interested in doing a Denali National Park tour, one of the longer ones that we talked about, make sure you book a cruise tour that has two nights 
at the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. One of the things that Princess does better than anybody else is we create this very seamless cruise tour experience. We own and operate the lodges, the train, the buses, the cruise. So it's one experience. We take care of everything from luggage handling to key cards in your room to booking your dinner reservations. It is such a seamless experience and you'll get to see the best of the great land. For those of you who are looking for a more immersive Alaska experience, a cruise tour could be a great option for you. I hope this video has been helpful. See you next time. Okay, and we're back. You know, um, you guys listen to me. If you're gonna sell this, okay, a lot of people don't know what Alaska is. They really don't. You know, people in the Southwest, people in Arizona, Texas, they, they don't have a clue. And one of the things that's gonna help sell this is if you show them visually, for example, this video we just showed you, showing them all the great vistas, all the different things that you, they can do. They can do rail, they can do, uh, you know, lodging, the, the cruise, everything. They, it, this is part adventure, this is family friendly, but they don't know about it, they, they don't. You know, they, they, they don't know what Anchorage is compared to Juneau or the rest of the geography of Alaska. So if you're gonna sell this, get a group of people together, or if you're gonna be doing a Zoom with them, show them part of this video so they get a little bit of knowledge of where they're going to before they book. That way, they, that way they'll get excited about it, right, Susie? Yeah, and I really think if you're not really familiar with selling this product, um, that you use one of these videos. This, um, the one with Princess, I know it seems kind of, you know, step by step, but it's true. It's the best way for you to educate your customer about the options that they have available to them. Because yeah. unless you show them this, a lot of people think that you can only cruise northbound, southbound. They don't even think about right. the interior or what else there is to do there. And they think once they get up there, you're just gonna leave them in Anchorage. They don't know anything about Denali or about the rail. Right. I wanted to bring up one thing. Um, and the princess uh, video shows that some of those lodges have limited amounts of rooms. So if some of them, some of them might only have 80, 85 rooms. So I don't want you to make it sound like it's urgency, but don't disappoint your person if this is what you've sold them on, that they want to do the cruise tour. Also, they might have to be a little bit flexible with their dates because it does sell out. Right. The land part sells quickly. And also, don't forget the meals. Once you get on land are not included. Right. So if you're doing an interior from like Anchorage to Denali, there are no meals included. So don't assume because it's part of a last a part of a princess product or anybody else that just like on the ship, you get all your meals. This is not true. All the meals are you have to pay for your own meals once you get on land there and they start doing these tours. OK, but, but so the rail is included home. and the lodging right. is included. All right. Right. All right, so, all right, uh, look, where to book Alaska for sea and land tours. Again, these, these are our platinum cruise suppliers, Carnival, Princess, Royal Caribbean. MSC does not at the m moment go to Alaska, all right? Land tours, if you just want to do land tours, fishing trips, Delta World Agent Direct is our gold uh, preferred supplier, Mayflower tours, the rail tours, I would look at rail bookers and Amtrak vacations, okay? Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, if you've got questions, there we go. There's our contact information if you want more information about Alaska. Amanda, do we have any questions? Um, just people asking for the video link. So the video link I have posted in chat, so feel free to use that. Thank um, you. I do not see any other, wait, let me just make sure. Okay, let me just say something here while Amanda's looking. Be very careful with booking this you know, don't be trying to sell this in the spring in April for a June or July. You're not going to get it. This stuff sells out really fast. I'm telling you, it, it's like you got to book it a year in advance if you want to do some of these things. So, you know, and that's when Susie says create that urgency is because this stuff goes quick. Now, again, we're on waiting until operations start up with the cruise lines again. Hopefully, you know, the second season of Alaska's economy they rely on this tourism so much I don't think they can last another second season without it but hopefully we will be seeing something in July hopefully right okay. Okay. we are you know we've been preaching this positivity all along since we've gone into this bubble and as you can see as time goes on things are starting to relax a little bit but if people you know they just need to be careful a lot of the countries 
you have to remember like Tahiti, the reason it closed down, there's not hardly any hospitals there. So they can't afford an, a, a pandemic to hand Apple to someplace like that. I think there's one teeny hospital in Papiete. So you need to keep on top of what's going on. We're not only, you know, even when you leave the state of California now, okay. in some places you've got to have a test to come back in. So it's just really important times, but please keep positive about this. This is a destination that I think once your person goes there and you sell it properly, you're going to have a customer for a very long time because they're going to think you're the best yeah. because you're going to give them an experience they won't they will not forget right they're going to come back blown away okay we have four off. questions now okay um right, real, first question can you eat on the ship when doing land tours oh yeah well wait if you're doing an inside passage and when you get off like in juno you get off and you can do whatever you want but you can always come back to the ship to eat that's always there when it's docked if you're talking about when you do the land part across from Anchorage to Denali, the ship is not there. The ship is 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 um, docked in, I think it's Whittier is what it's called. And that's, I think, over an hour, more than an hour's ride from Anchorage. So no, you can't go back to the ship. Once you get off and do the land part, the ship is not yours to go back to eat and sleep on, no. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay, I'm going to switch off between Facebook and YouTube questions. So that was a Facebook question. YouTube, are the 2022 sailings available for sale yet? Yes, they should be. They should be. Check check your your uh, your inventory in Carnival Princess and Royal Caribbean, but they are showing 2022 uh, inventory. Okay, next question. Facebook, what kind of temperatures is it during the summer? Uh, extreme cold, question mark. Um, I meant to bring that up. People say, you know, oh, is it going to be warmer in August than July? I'll be honest with you. I've been there in June and I've been there in September. The difference in temperature is not that big a deal. You're talking, it's not a warm destination by any means. You're going to be from the lower, from the 50s to maybe 65. I've been in June and it was 80 degrees the day we went out. And I'm not kidding. People were not prepared for 80 degrees. People brought, you know, they're, their winter jackets and their snow boots and everything and they're like shedding their clothes going oh my god it's 80 degrees it sounds crazy but there is not a difference in those three months the temperature might vary you know five to ten degrees but it, it and also that's going to affect your pricing so when you start looking june is going to be less than july and august by far okay so it's not that big a deal for temperature go okay. ahead jose you as the agent should be looking up what the weather conditions would be like. Go to weather.com. It'll it, they'll forecast that out for you. They, that way you have that and give that weather information to your clients going, okay, you're going on that cruise to Alaska next week. They're showing 70 degree weather or 65 degree weather. That way they're prepared to what they're going to wear and what how what to expect. Okay. And that's a real, yeah, that's probably the best thing you could do is yes. Well, after you book them, but a week or 10 days before, start looking at the weather patterns to help them pack properly. Right. Because if you see a couple of days where it's going to be rainy and whatever, yeah, they need to bring an umbrella. They need to bring a, a slicker or something that will, you're right. still going to want to go outside whether it's raining or not. Just because it's raining, you're just not going to go, well, I'm not going out. Right. That's kind of the experience of going there is getting wet. I mean, zombie. this place, <laughs> adventure, family friendly, uh, and, and, and I'm telling you, they'll come back blown away. All right. Any okay, other questions? we have a lot more questions, so I'd like to get through these. Okay, next question. Um, do we use Norwegian cruise lines? And which cruise line would you personally recommend for the best glass experience? Okay, I'll answer that. Yes, we do Norwegian cr cruise line, but they're not one of our golds or one of our platinum preferred suppliers. We would like you to book with Princess or Royal Caribbean. You'll make more commission this way. Uh, in Carnival, okay? Look at the commissions that we have. If you go to the Evolution Preferred Supplier page, if your client really wants to book Norwegian, we can do that too for them. Okay, okay. perfect. Next question. Um, my group wants to go in July 2022. Um, can I call you for help? Yes, call me and I'll give you the steps. And we'll work with Peggy because Peggy, Peggy does big time on uh, knows about Alaska and the Alaska cruises. She's our cruise coordinator and our and group if, cruise coordinator. Yeah, and if you have a group, um, Peggy will be able to nego negotiate a group contract for you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Next question. Is it too late to book a cruise for July and August of this year? I have a client that has had a previous booking canceled for April and wants to reschedule with me on Norwegian. 
I would go ahead if you find a sailing that works for her and it's available, I would considering the information we got today, you might want to put her toward July or August if she's yeah. open. Yeah, because because of Canada. Yeah. Okay. Anything um, else? I I do see a question in Spanish. Um, that someone would love to have this training in Espanol. And um, uh, uh, me encanta hablar a Violet, our trainer yeah. in Spanish. Yes. And yeah, she yeah. could do a training okay. and entrenamiento uh, in Espanol uh, co como yeah. Alaska. So. Here, I'll, 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 I'll do it. Let me try. Let me try, yeah. Amanda. Oh, yeah. Mira, yo, yo me voy a hablar con uh, Violeta y ella te puede presentar un video. Uh, para este cuando que todas las cosas que está haciendo para visitar Alaska. So let me speak to Violet and we'll get this going and we'll show the same slides. Muchas right, gracias, oh, Jose. Yeah. Sorry. I, I think Violet, yes. <laughs> English. I think Violet already has this because um, she took what we have and I gave it to her today because that is on her agenda to oh. do this training for for Mexico, she already has that on her list. So All right, cool. you can talk to her, but you can let this person know that she does have it down. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it will be there very and shortly. We just did Hawaii, so I'm sure Alaska is coming. So. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, if you didn't see the link in the chat for the YouTube video, I see someone said that. I'll just going to post it again and tag you. Um, it looks like that was the last question, and we're going to wrap it up because we have. The Archer Travel News Report coming to you in 20 minutes. And just 20 don't, minutes. Tw yeah, 20 minutes. Don't forget to like this and share this to all your agents. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll let you guys close it out, Jose and Susie. Uh, Susie, you did a great job today, okay? Thank I'll call you, you soon. Thank you. thank you all for joining us again today on Thursday, G for Geography. And I hope you learned something. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And, you know, you get Jose every day. Good for you. <laughs> oh, Jose, what are you doing in Positivity. 20 minutes? Positivity. All right, you guys, see you at the top of the hour. What are you right, doing, bye. though? What is, what is your topic? What, my topic today? Yeah. Okay, you got you can't miss this. I'm going to show you the wave deals for February 2021. And they're starting right now, so get ready. All right, I'll see you at the top of the hour. Okay, see you guys in 20. Bye. Bye.